Hello everyone, this is Angela here and today um, I'd like to talk about hoarding disorder and how my mother's hoarding disorder negatively affected my life and I've talked about this in other videos but I really want to talk about some things that I didn't talk about before. Um, one of the things that I didn't talk about before was ABC had did a video called Children of Hoarders. It's uploaded on YouTube and I had commented on that video and my comment got 896 likes. So I want to share the comment that I put on that video and I also want to um, explain um, a few things, okay, a few things. Um, okay, so here's what I said. My mother was a level five hoarder and I suffered similar things like this young man was talking about. I remember the horrific stench of our refrigerator. A fresh gallon of milk would go sour in about three days. I had no friends. I was embarrassed and ashamed. She did not cook, wash clothes, clean, nothing. I remember when I was in the sixth grade, I wore the same clothes without being washed for one week to school. The school complained, but there was, but nothing was done. Nothing. She never cared about me as a child or my siblings. Many times we went hungry because there was nothing to eat. She ate out, so according to her, it was not her problem. She worked long hours just to escape the reality of her home, and she allowed her children to live in that filth without a care in the world. People are calling this a mental illness, which it is. It most certainly is a mental illness. But there comes a time where these people must be held accountable for their own mental illness, especially when it comes to how their illness affects their helpless children. We are the ones who suffer because they have a choice to clean it up and refuse, but we have no choice in that matter because we have to put up with it. One might say, well, why didn't you take charge and clean the crap up and start throwing stuff out? We tried to do this, but it was all in vain because every time we tried to clean it up or throw something out, she knew that her junk was thrown out, obviously, even though it was very little of a cleanup. Then you get the rage. Do you know what the rage is? The rage is the severe tantrum and dumpster diving that she would do as a result of her stuff being thrown out. So not only do you have to deal with an absolutely exhausting task of cleaning up the crap, but instead of being greeted with appreciation and gratefulness, you are greeted with extreme hostility and rage. So you give up. And as a child of a hoarder, I realized that the only escape was to flee any way you can. Find a way, find a way to move out. Just go. You simply cannot reason with these people. I don't care what the hoarder show has to say about how sorry they feel for these people. Sorry, folks. I do not feel sorry for my mother. She created nothing but misery for anyone and everyone who was directly in her life because she chose to live that lifestyle. These people are not in a state of delusion or psychosis where they don't understand that their house looks like the city dump. They refuse to change and do not care about how it affects their loved ones, especially their children. Can anyone, anyone reading this tell me that a hoarder like this loves her child? What mother would choose garbage over the well-being and love of her child? Am I wrong? Okay. So, with that said, okay, the point that I was trying to make out is 
the hoarder is basically having the attitude, my stuff is more important than my child. And another YouTuber by the, who goes by the channel Permission to Exist, she did an excellent video and she associated hoarding with narcissism. Um, I have been saying this for years that my mother was a narcissist. She had full-blown narcissistic personality disorder. No, I'm not diagnosing her. This is just my personal opinion because she had all the signs, all the symptoms, all of the traits of a covert narcissist. But the one aspect of her narcissism that was overt was the hoarding. The hoarding, because instead of like her narcissistic supply being a person, okay, or people, um, it was things. And these things basically had no value. Um, she would wear paper clips as rings. Um, she would wear rubber bands as bracelets. Like, she truly was mentally ill and in a deep state of denial about it. But I want to, now that I've expressed that aspect, I want to talk about the physical um, reality of a house that, that's a hoarder, living in a house of a hoarder. You cannot sleep because there was roaches crawling everywhere. Um, it was very hard to keep food fresh and free of vermin. Um, I remember one time my brother, right, he would eat like the one thing that we pretty much always had in the house was cereal. And my brother used to eat all the cereal. He, he used to take food and go upstairs in his bedroom and eat in his bedroom. And because that was like his safe space. So what he would do is he would take it all for himself and leave none for us. So one day there was a box of cookie crisp. And I remember like, oh, wow, he didn't eat it all. And so I went to go pour the cereal in to eat it. And here it was all, there was roaches inside of the cereal. And it's like the infestation was so bad. They were in everything. They were inside of the refrigerator. If you open the door of the refrigerator, the stench of garbage would just hit you really hard. I mean, it was that unbelievable. Um, when I got older, like, I cleaned out the refrigerator. Like, but the refrigerator was so far gone. It was like, you know, it, it pretty much was a lost cause. Even that. Um, you couldn't find things if you put something down. Because it would get buried under other things. And there was no place to relax. Because um, you were tripping and falling over everything. There, there, just, it, there was no sense of structure. Of order, order, you know, order, like orderliness or, you know, how... Things are supposed to be done or put a certain way. Um, it just got out of hand. It just really got out of hand. And it was quite embarrassing um, when people would come over. And it's like, you know, I always felt like I didn't matter. And, you know, my relatives... Um, like my grandparents on both sides, like my nanny, like that was my maternal grandmother. She used to make fun of my mother and say, what a disgrace. And, um, uh, how can you keep a house like that? And, you know, so she kind of just made the problem a bit worse by like kind of ridiculing her daughter, my mother. 
my father's mother was like an angel you know she used to come over and try to clean the house up like especially when we were real little and I was 15 years old when my baby sister was born and so my grandmother took charge my father's mother and got all the kids because we were teens when she was born and we all um, pitched in and cleaned it to the point where it was livable and we took out 60 bags of trash 60 bags of trash just then when you know before my mother got put into a nursing home um the bags of trash were double because then when like people everybody died and nobody was like at least trying to get rid of some of the trash it she was left to her own accord you know after my father died so it be, it really became a level five hoard in terms of junk in terms of vermin in terms of trash and it's like vermin just love trash and you know as a child i felt like the world and i said this before and i'll just say it again i felt like the world was an unkind place i felt like there was something wrong that we were different i knew that we were different and i felt terrorized um i felt terrorized by my brother because he was a bully a real bully and i felt ashamed you know I felt really ashamed I felt worthless and another thing about growing up being a child of a hoarder is my mother didn't teach me self-care you know what I'm saying like how to groom myself how to keep myself um you know brush my hair and like I had to find out I had to discover life all on my own and I discovered life by um, entering into the school of hard knocks um, I would say that I have a doctorate degree from the school of hard knocks because life really uh, kicked me in the butt but I'm grateful for the experiences as crazy as that sound I'm grateful for the experiences because without those experiences I wouldn't be the healthy mature adult that I am today and I sincerely mean that um I have forgiven my mother you know I by simply by accepting her for who she was you know she's passed on and I don't miss her mm -mm. I don't miss her um my father who I loved you know um that was a love-hate relationship I loved my dad but I also resented my dad at the same time for different reasons and I think that I will talk about in my next video um on this subject when I when I do my next video that I'm going to talk about how the, how my mother's hoarding affected their relationship and her narcissism specifically from my father's point of view as I observed it um so that's something interesting that I'm looking forward to talk about because I really never really talked that much about my dad it was more so my mom um my dad was not a narcissist he was a codependent enabler and so with that I'm going to uh stop this video and I'll catch you all in the next video. Take care. Bye.